Good morning. It's morning here where I am, but anytime you are listening to my podcast, how are you guys? Welcome to DWS episode two. And this is season two, y'all. Fixing relationships. And that's what I want to talk about. Fixing the relationships. Y'all, if y'all see this glare in my glasses, if y'all are looking on YouTube, I sometimes I don't even want to wear my glasses when I'm doing the podcast because y'all can see the screen. I have to keep my head like this, like down, in order for you not to see the glare in my glasses. If anybody got some tips and tricks on how I can fix that, please let me know. Otherwise, I'd be wearing my glasses like this, like like old lady style, like back in the day. I think that's cute, though. What y'all think? Anywho, man, we are losing people left and right. And I feel like I have something heavy on my heart that I want to talk about. Um, I've recently lost someone that's very close to me and dear to me. Uh, and I wanted to fix the relationship. And the person that passed away was not the person I need to fix the relationship. The person that I'm talking about is my father. I love my father to death. Do we have a relationship? No, we do not. Do I want to fix the relationship? Yes, I do. I truly, truly always wanted a relationship with my father. Uh, That's important to a female. You know, that's how you learn, you know, what type of man you are looking for. Your father is that figure for you. And for me, that's not really case. I mean, I look, I got my degree in information technology because my father is smart with computers. And I figured, why not? We got something in common, right? I'm doing something that he knows and he can help me with. So we can spend more time together. But that wasn't the case. And that's not the case now. I mean, we rarely talk, probably holidays, birthdays, random calls, things like that. But I wanted advice from you. How do you fix it? Like, if you want to talk to that person, how do you get them to want to build that relationship with you and I'm sure he wants to but my father has some things going on that's personal that I don't want to talk about in my podcast because I don't know if he wants that information out there and is personal to my family and to him so I just wanted to to get your advice and come on here and say those relationships are very important because that's your DNA. That's the person you, you know, that had you, that made you, right? Of course, my mom had me, but my mom passed away when I was 18. So I really had a father figure from my grandparents, like my granddad and my grandmother was that mother for me. And a lot of my aunts, you know, my great aunts and auntie, my sister, those are like, my mothers you know I have more than one mother and for me my father I have two fathers I would say my granddad and my dad but for me for the most part I mean my granddad gives me advice gives me life tips sometimes I'll call my dad just just to see like hey what is the advice that you can give me on this subject because I really want this relationship if y'all see me looking down I'm looking at like my notes so I can make sure I stay on track because I do have to go to work soon so um side note side note really quick and we can get back into it y'all see my Georgia shirt 65 to 7 y'all they should have called the game we was oh Jesus we was whooping up on them that's illegal that's illegal 65 to 7 Wait, we are the champions. CC, y'all the losers. But anywho, I'm sorry, I had to do that. One of the questions that I wrote down in my notes is, do you just reach out or sit back and let it pan out? You know, and a lot of times I have over the years, I have reached out to my father. Um, We talk, like I said, rarely, but we talk 
does he know me as a person? Does he know what I like, what I dislike, what direction I'm going in? You know, my success, what I have going on in my daily life. No, he does not know unless he listens to my YouTube, listens to my podcast or see something that I post because we do follow each other on social media. And I'm getting to the point where I'm turning 30 this year and I don't want to miss that time with my father, if that makes sense. So I don't know if I should have this conversation or when he calls me, you know, let him know how I'm feeling because a lot of times we let things pan out and that person is gone. You don't think about like how important that relationship was to you because it affects you in the long run. We don't really understand if we never had a father or never had, a, you know, a mother there, it does affect you. You want to know what was your relationship or what would your relationship have been? You asking all these questions in your head and your head starts spinning. But for me, my relationship with my father is important because I literally was so close to my mother. My mother, everything to me. Still to this day, I think about her. You know, I think about what would she think of what I'm doing today? And I'm pretty sure some of my listeners can understand this, you know, especially in our African-American community. It's sad that we don't have some of our parents in our lives. It's really sad. And a lot of times I don't think on the other side, they realize how important those relationships are. Um, The other question I wrote down was how do you build something at this age in my life like how do I sit down with my father and say hey hey father I'm 30 I'm about to be 30 years old and you about to be 51 when we gonna fix this because it's not just me right I'm looking after my brother I'm looking after my baby sister you know it's not just me and I have to be the voice for all of us because you know we all live in different locations. My brother lives in the same location with my father. And I'm sure they talk every now and then. My, Me and my sister do not live in the same location. But they live in the same state. I do not live in the same state with them. So how do I get you or that person to understand, like, we are at the age now where I need you in my life. I need you, right? I need advice. You have lived 50, you know, you'll be 51 this year. You have lived this long. I need guidance, right? Even if you don't understand, but my dad is very, very smart, y'all. He is so intelligent. And sometimes it hurts me that he just does not per se nothing, but he's, in a, he's going through some things, like I said, some personal things and it affects him. And I want to see him do great. I want to see him healthy. I want to see him be the best person he can be. And, you know, that's a lot of people say, what inspire you? What's your motivation? My motivation is that like, I see, you know, how my father is. I seen what my mother went through. I seen what my sister went through, my aunts, my auntie, like my grandparents, everybody. Like I seen Throughout my 29 years of life, I've seen how people navigate through life and I take in what I want from people and what I don't want. And what I don't want to do is get to a place where I have not did everything I could to fix it, right? I even, to to fix it, I even thought about my dad moving with me, right? But I'm not that type of person yet. I'm not there yet Well, I can take care of another person yet even though my dad has his own money but I will still have him in my space and have to do certain things you know like I'm rarely home anyway and and I'm thinking so what's the point right and maybe I will get to that point when our relationship is together but it's basically like I will be living with a stranger but not really you know my dad he's been in my life throughout my life right but it's technically technically we don't know much about each other. I don't know what my dad dislikes or likes I know that he loves playing golf I know that he loves computers and, and programming computers and doing everything with computers he know how to build a computer I know that he likes video games every now and then I know that he watches movies 
you know, like I know those, you know, main things about him, but I wanted to come on here and literally talk about this because I'm not the only one that's feeling it, right? I know that you guys out there having problems with your parents. I know. And you're at the age now where you want to know. And it happens to a lot of us. It really does. And it's sad that we have to deal with that. And it's another reason why we're going to go into, you know, my sobriety. And then we'll go into the random facts and motivation. I'm doing stuff a little different because I had a lot on my heart. And I've been interviewing people. So y'all haven't seen me just by myself doing my own thing since last season or last year which wasn't that long ago, y'all. I'm talking like it was months ago. But I started this podcast in October and I started with myself and I decided that I need to start getting other people on my podcast so that y'all can reach out to them and and listen to their greatness, right? So the other thing I wanted to talk about was why I chose to stop drinking for real. Like I, I told you the story at the beginning of my podcast, you know, I had to weigh too many shots, my stomach was hurting, I was pain, I was sick, right? But then if I really deep down inside think about it, I stopped, I stopped drinking because of the life that I seen around me, if that makes sense. I have not decided whether I want to go back to drinking or drinking or drink every now and then have a glass of wine. Nothing's wrong with, you know, having a glass of wine, but not going all the way in like I used to. And I want to be a better person. I do because drinking got me where, right? I wasn't angry or mad at anyone but sometimes I just didn't want to talk to anybody I was in my bubble I would drink wake up early in the morning drink and just be to myself and that's what I wanted but is that what I really wanted no that's not like why am I doing that so for me you know you think about your assets and your liability for me in a personal aspect, mentally, drinking was a liability for me. Drinking was expensive. Right now, I'm not I'm not spending as much money. I'm not going out as much. If I do go out, I'll get like a mocktail or something, or if they have non-alcoholic drink. You know, it just dawned on me, like, why? What was drinking doing to you? And I realized yesterday when I wrote down my notes that drinking was a liability. So y'all, y'all, let me stop on my soapbox. Um, I hope that y'all have, you know, I don't hope that y'all have the same problems, but I hope that you understand what I'm going through. And maybe you guys can leave me some advice. I would really appreciate it because I really want to fix the relationships that I have in my life. Uh, with my family because that's important and people are leaving left and right so the random fact of the day random fact of the day a random fact of the day random fact of the day all right the random fact is the eye of an ostrich is bigger than its brain its eyes are around the size of a biller ball one eye is also smaller than the other perhaps this is why they tend to run in circles y'all let me know how y'all feel about that random fact I did not know about the eye stretch okay that's why they say you know your eyes bigger than your stomach you know that's probably why they run in circles I don't know how that correspond but that's the only thing I could think of the last thing I want to lay on you guys this week, this day, if you're listening to it, whenever you're listening to it, is a motivational quote. The motivational quote of the week is, we all make mistakes, but what matters is how we go back and fix them by Ryan Christian. How we all make mistakes. We do. We, we literally all make mistakes. But how do you go back and fix them? You try. That's what you do. You try all you can do to fix the mistakes. 
And if it's just a regular mistake and you can't go back and fix it, guess what? Leave it in the past and let it go. For all blessings flow, be great, be you. And have a great day. Thank you for listening, y'all. Thank you. Thank you.